Josh, in all of your experiences with hurricanes, and you've had a lot of them, tell me the most intense. And I, if I had to guess, it might be in the Bahamas, but you tell me. Yeah, that's a good question. I would say it's t- there's a tie for first place. Uh, one would be the Bahamas hurricane that you mentioned. That was Hurricane Dorian, which is tied with the 1935 Labor Day hurricane in Florida as the strongest known hurricane landfall in North America had sustained winds of 185 miles an hour. And I went through that in a little town called Marsh Harbor on great Abaco Island. And, uh, that's a nuclear grade hurricane. That's, that's not just cat five. That's way into cat five. That's cat six. If it existed and, uh, just the force of wind like that, it's hard to describe. Uh, it was really something it went right through the eye, uh, which was crazy, had that stadium look to it um, where you could see the circle of clouds around you. And uh, I was trapped on the island for days afterward. So I'd say that was tied for first place with Super Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines, which is equivalent of what we would call a Category 5 hurricane. Uh, I was in a city that was at the top of a bay, got completely swept by a giant storm surge. Many thousands uh, died within the city. And with that hurricane, what sticks out most in my mind, or that typhoon, was that I went from being a chaser to a rescuer. At a certain point, uh, I just threw down my camera and was pulling people out of the water. So those are the two that stand out for me. So, so, so weather enthusiasts understand, but the question is for everybody else watching this, why in the world... Do you do this? What's your motivation? That's a great question. And I would say it's evolved over the years. I would say when I was younger, it was about the adrenaline rush. It was, it was almost like a drug addiction. I mean, to be perfectly honest, like I just, this need to kind of be in the storm and experience it and feel it. It's evolved over the years. Now my biggest joy, and I don't want to put people to sleep, but it's going inside the storms and collecting data, um, collecting high quality data, you know, coming out of the storm with with all these numbers that give you clues about how strong the hurricane was, uh, the structure of it, what was going on with it, things like that. That's my big joy now is nerding out with the numbers afterward. And again, I don't mean to put people to sleep, but like I said, the sort of the, the experience for me has evolved over the years. So let's talk about this year, the 2024 season. Did this season go as you expected it to go? No. If I, I it's if I had to think of, I was trying to think of what's one word that captures this season. I, I think one word would be bipolar. I think another one would be maybe roller coaster. <laughs> like yeah. It was like, like seriously, like, okay, what's up with this thing? It was like that kind of friend that's like really hot and cold. Like some days they're really nice and some days they're just like not returning your calls. So we started out with Hurricane Barrel, this earliest category five on record, big long tracker blasting through the Caribbean and Mexico and into Texas, devastating many communities. And it was like, whoa, this is a big start. Wow, wow, this is gonna be crazy this season. And then peak season, the Atlantic was just a funeral parlor. I mean, there was just like nothing going on. And it's like, oh, okay, I guess it's a bust. I guess we're not really having hurricane season. And then just when everyone was saying that, all the wise guys on Twitter, (laughs) <laughs> then the season was like, oh, really? Oh, really? And then, you know, sent these, I shouldn't joke about it, but these epic hurricanes into the Gulf Coast. Um, and now we're into November and we're looking at another potential strong hurricane in the Gulf. So I would say a really weird kind of up and down sort of season. And I, and I think, Josh, a lot of people tend to forget that the the tropical world doesn't just focus in the Gulf of Mexico. There's a lot of ocean around the world, too, not just the Atlantic Basin, but the Pacific Basin. You've chased them all. Yeah. Um, most of my chasing is actually outside of the United States. I chase all around the world. And this year is about half and half, but I chased three typhoons, two in Taiwan, one in Japan. I also chased in Bermuda all over the place. And here's an interesting factoid, actually, because we, you know, we tend to be very focused on what's happening in the Atlantic and specifically the part of the Atlantic that's very close to the U.S., like the Gulf, for example. But here's what's really interesting. We've had a, an above normal season in the Atlantic, but all other parts of the world are actually well below normal, whether it's the Western Pacific, the Indian Ocean, down in the Southern Hemisphere around Australia, all other parts of the world, activity is well below normal. So globally, we're actually in hurricane deficit right now, even though for Americans, it seems like things are out of control. So one of the things you do, and I really appreciate this, part of what you do, it's mitigating loss of life. You're helping the weather enterprise save lives. And I I think one of the really good things you've done is set a great example by that structure that you're in. Kind of describe your 
poem and why it's different. Yeah, yeah. So this here where I'm sitting, this is Hurricane House. So I'm in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi, which is has been ground zero for some of the worst hurricanes in American history. It was ground zero for Katrina. This neighborhood was devastated. Uh, and then before that, Hurricane Camille in 1969, the eye of it passed right over this location when it had estimated winds of 175 miles an hour. So when I started to build my house, I thought, okay, and I'm only a block from the Gulf. So I thought hard about, okay, how do I make this house resistant to hurricanes? Now, one of the most important things, of course, is being high enough above the Gulf of Mexico so that the surge isn't going to get you. Uh, my house is, the floor is 23 feet above sea level, which is high enough for almost all hurricanes, except for like three to 500 year events. So we'll see how that goes. But the structure itself, I worked hard to make it wind resistant. And um, a lot of folks have come to me now and they've asked me, okay, what should I do? to my house to follow your example. And I boiled it down to, I think there's three things that folks should think about. You know, if they want their home to be hurricane resistant. First, there's your roof. And, and that's because, I mean, if the roof rips off, it's game over. Like you, you, are, you are in deep trouble if your roof rips off. So make sure it's attached properly. Make sure it's a good roof. Uh, consider re-roofing if you need to. I went with a metal standing seam roof, which is the best kind for hurricanes. This is the kind that stays on in crazy wind. Uh, and that's based on my experiences around the world in the Bahamas and places like that. Those are the roofs that stay on. Number two, your windows. They are the weak point for most uh, houses. And I think you have two options there. One is to go with impact glass, which is the kind that won't shatter if flying debris hits it. Or you could do what I did, which is have nice, big, heavy shutters that could go over the windows to cover them. So that's two. The third thing is something that a lot of people don't think about, which is your siding. Now, I think of the siding in my house, I think of it as like its coat of armor, okay? Now, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, they say that if you want to build a house that is resistant to wind, rain, impact from flying debris, even fire, go with what's called fiber cement. I'm a traditionalist. I wanted wood, but my builder was like, uh-uh, we're going fiber cement because that stuff is at, it, it's in, it's it's much more resistant to all of these sort of forces. And I went with the industry leader, which is James Hardy. It is the best of the best. It's engineered for climate, and literally it is. Get this, they have different formulations for different climates. So if you're on the Gulf Coast and you're prone to high humidity, high winds, they have one formulation. If you're building for like Northern climates where it's dry and cold, a different formulation. So they have these different formulations. I went for the one that's good for the Gulf Coast and that gives my house an edge in terms of hurricane resistance. So again, roof, windows, and good siding. Great advice. And one more thing, Josh, how can people follow you? I, I love your social media accounts. They're no nonsense, good information. You don't scare people. It's credible. It's just amazing. So tell everybody watching this how they can follow you on the social networks. On most social platforms, you could follow me. Uh, my handle is iCyclone, the letter I and the word cyclone.